Hello everyone, it's time to look at chromosomes and cell division. And we're looking at the instructions for life here. So, what is the difference, first of all, between chromosomes, DNA, and genes? Which are three words you may have heard before, and they can be quite easily confused. But basically, the nucleus of a cell contains DNA, which stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. And DNA stores around 30,000 pieces of information, and each piece of information is called a gene. So many genes together make up chromosomes that are long stretches of genetic instructions and these make proteins which are the body's basic building blocks. Actually they make amino acids which are then assembled into proteins. And different species have different numbers of chromosomes in all of their body cells. So human body cells, for example, each have 23 matching pairs of chromosomes. And if they have 23 pairs of chromosomes, this means they have 46 chromosomes altogether in each body cell. So, if we just look at this schematic diagram, you can see the diagram of a cell, which you probably have seen before, and inside the nucleus there is wrapped up all of the genetic material in chromosomes. And the chromosomes are stretches of information, and parts of a chromosome are called genes. So what exactly is DNA? Well, you might have seen something like this before, and this is the famous shape of DNA, which is called a double helix. And this is the staircase shape that you see. And the spines of the molecule, the yellow bands that go around the outside, are made of sugar phosphate chains. And each pair of sugar phosphates, one on each side of the molecule, is connected by two nucleobases what we call the colored sticks in the middle of the molecule and so a step on the staircase a sugar phosphate and a nucleobase attached is called a nucleotide so we also quickly need to ask what is RNA you may have heard of DNA before but you might not have heard of RNA so this is another kind of molecule, it stands for ribonucleic acid, so it does not have the D prefix. And RNA is thought to be the elder cousin of DNA, the first genetic coding material that evolved on Earth. And so this was the first time that chemistry could save information. So RNA is still important today. It is used in the process of reading and copying DNA, uh, but we won't spend too much time on RNA here. The two main differences are the shape of the molecule. RNA is not a perfect double helix. And then RNA uses a different kind of nuclear base from DNA. It's called uracil and it replaces thymine. What are those two chemicals, you ask? Well, let's have a look on the next slide. So, it's all in code. Let's unpack a molecule of DNA, shall we? So we've straightened it out and lined it up here, and you will see that it is a chain of paired nucleotides, and we call this a polynucleotide. Poly is a prefix that you see often when you are talking about things in very long chains. And there are four different nucleobases that we can use. Adenine, cytosine, guanine, or thymine, or uracil if we're talking about RNA. So on each side there is a sugar phosphate and a nucleobase, and that connects to another sugar phosphate that goes in the opposite direction and another nucleobase on the other side. And if you look, you will see that each nucleobase only connects to one other nucleobase. So adenine will only connect with thymine and cytosine will only connect with guanine. And in this way, 
DNA stores the information that writes all of your genetic traits, not just those that make you human, but also those that decide what kind of human traits you will have. So here are the 23 pairs of chromosomes that come from just one human cell and are in every body cell of a human. They're 23 pairs, which means 46 chromosomes. They are numbered 1 to 22, and then there is one that's labeled X, which we'll talk about very shortly. So 99% of the information in any fertilized egg is the same. 99.9% .9 of your genetic information is the same as every other human being on the planet. It is just 0.1% of the information that makes you unique. So let's talk about sexy chromosomes, and this is a sexy chromosome, isn't it? This is one of the chromosomes we saw on the previous slide. Remember the 23rd pair was called X, and here is an X chromosome. But this is only one form of chromosome 23, and here is the other one. And this is a slightly uglier looking specimen, and this is the Y chromosome. And you might think it looks a little less organized than the X, and you'd be right. It has shrunk and lost much genetic information over the millions of years of evolution. We'll talk more about that when we talk about genetic mutation. So, some people have two X chromosomes as their 23rd pair, but other people will have an X chromosome and a Y chromosome as their 23rd pair. And the question is, what is the difference between the two of them? Well, the difference is whether you will be a man or a woman. These chromosomes are determining biological sex, so we call them not sexy, but sex chromosomes. So, a little more on sex chromosomes. If your 23rd pair is XX, then you will be a woman, and that means you got an X chromosome from your mum and an X chromosome from your dad. And if your 23rd pair is XY, then you will be a man, and you got an X chromosome from your mum, and you got a Y chromosome from your dad. So, this is a little simple, obviously, and there are rare but actual genetic mutations where some people have two X chromosomes and a Y chromosome, or even a triple X chromosome. So, these things can happen, but for our purposes, this basic situation is fine. So let's just look at some definitions, shall we? And first of all, what are traits? Well, they are characteristics. That might not help. They are just things that can make creatures different from each other or from other members of different species. Skin color, ear shape, number of legs, all of these are traits that are passed down genetically, as well as less solid things like sense of smell or eyesight. Heredity is when traits are passed from one generation to the next. We can describe traits as being hereditary, but the process of those traits being passed is called heredity. And then finally, genetics, which is the overall study of heredity and generational biology and the underlying chemistry of that. And part of the underlying chemistry is homologous chromosomes, which is a scary word, but it's not that bad. It's just two chromosomes with the same number. If you remember the picture of human chromosomes, the pairs that had the same number looked kind of the same. And this is homologous chromosomes. Sorry, these are homologous chromosomes. So, what is the diploid number? Well, the diploid number is the number of chromosomes that are found in the body cell of a creature. And these body cells are also called somatic cells. And this is, in humans, the number 46, which is the number of chromosomes that we have all together, 23, times two because there is a pair of each of them. And finally we have the haploid number, which is half of the diploid number. Although we normally talk in terms of the haploid number n, and the diploid number is 2n. 
And the haploid number is the number of chromosomes found in the sex cells, the ones that you used to pass your genetic information on to the next generation. And the haploid number in humans is therefore 23. So we're going to leave it there for today and next time look a little bit more about way, the way cells reproduce themselves. If you want to get more detailed about DNA and the way it writes itself, then you can check out these videos by Hank Green on the Crash Course YouTube channel. These videos go beyond what we will study in the module and they are not designed for ESL students, so be warned, but they are excellent and detailed introductions.